Hello, Star Citizen Verse. Welcome to another episode of Casual Citizen, an ongoing series about the upcoming first person MMO, Star Citizen, by Cloud Imperium Games. I'm your host, Alyssiana from AlyssianasWorld.com. Begin transmission. The Misk Prospector. The Prospector is designed as the introductory ship for the mining profession. As such, I expected it to fulfill the bare bones minimum of what was described in the mining design document that we received a while back. And it does. You can mine and carry the collected materials to a location to be sold. For those who enjoy the idea of RP and being on a ship that seems plausible for its role, it has a decent amount of interior space. There's a bed, bathroom, and extra living space where you could place hand-carried cargo crates. Well, once they add animations to support carrying objects when you have to use a ladder. Still, call me surprised that they missed that one. The Prospector is a great little ship with a distinct role and one of the better cockpit views. As for mining with it, whew, CIG has done an excellent job for this first iteration. Sure, it needs some tweaking, but they pretty much nailed it. Quick introduction to mining. As was CIG's intent, mining will not support AFK behavior. They want all professions to be engaging and require some level of interaction by the player. They want there to be skill involved. In this case, monitoring and muscle memory are a factor in your outcome. For this first release, we can only mine on the moons. Asteroid mining will come later. Using the Prospector, there are three parts to the mining mechanic once you arrive at your desired location. Step 1. Your first step is to scan the area for mineable objects. You toggle to scan mode using the tab key and click whatever button you use to fire weapon group 1. I use a HOTAS. For mouse and keyboard users, this is likely your left mouse button. You can control the range of the scan, which impacts the level of details that come back from the ping. In this case, however, using the default works just fine. To scan, you can land or float slowly over the surface of the moon, pinging the scanner, and stop when you see rocks marked with the blue identification marker over them. Step 2. Your next step is to fracture the rocks down into smaller units that can be extracted. Hover over a tagged rock to view its composition. You want to spend your time mining rocks that contain the highest concentration of sellable materials. Even better are those that contain decent percentages of multiple metals. Once you've decided on which rock you want to mine, press the M key to toggle into the mining mode called Fracture. The art of mining in Star Citizen is a mini-game of heating the rock enough to fracture it into pieces without blowing it up. In order to accomplish this, you must watch two gauges on the left part of the HUD. Your mouse scroll wheel is going to be used to control the laser intensity, and you'll watch the laser throttle indicator on the HUD. Simultaneously, you want to monitor the rock's energy gauge. The energy gauge is monitoring the rock's internal temperature for combustibility. Your mission, Mr. Hunt, if you choose to accept it, is to get the rock's internal temperature into the green zone on the energy bar and hold it there until the fracturing sensor on the right side of the HUD reaches 100%. At 100%, while in the green portion of the energy, will cause a successful fracture. If you overheat the rock, it will explode, causing damage to nearby objects, including your ship. To avoid this scenario, you should be slowly ramping up the throttle on the mining laser, watching to see that impact on the rock's energy, throttling it up and down as appropriate. You'll hear a warning sound if the internal temperature is getting too high. If throttling it down isn't letting it cool off fast enough, turn off the laser or point it away from the rock until it cools down a bit and then start again. Step 3. When you've done it successfully, the rock will split into smaller pieces. Hover over them to identify which ones have a purple outline. These are the ones that are small enough to extract. Pieces that still have the orange outline must be mined again, fractured into even smaller pieces. 
Toggle from the laser, called fracture mode, to the extraction laser. Again, I use a HOTAS so I don't know the exact key, but it's likely the right mouse or the middle mouse button click to toggle. Hover over the purple pieces and left click to start extracting. The extracted material is being vacuumed into the prospector's storage containers. Long term, we will have six containers, I believe. Four that are attached and two that are empty that can be swapped out on site. However, since those features aren't in the game yet, we're being given the full six canisters worth of storage for now. So let's look at that again. In a nutshell, you scan for mineable rocks. Inspect them to find the best compositions. Switch to mining mode. Use the fracture laser to break the rock into smaller pieces. While doing so, you must monitor the rock's internal heat temperature. After a successful fracture, toggle to the extraction laser and vacuum up your earnings. Like most things in games, the harder it is, the bigger the return. For now, Selen has the lower level metals, so it's easier to learn the basics of mining there, whereas Daymar has the more lucrative metals, making them harder to mine successfully. So my suggestion is to head over to Selen, get comfortable with how things work, then try Yella, which is a little bit harder, and when you're feeling really confident, head over to Daymar. That's it for this episode, folks. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and registering on alicianasworld.com. This is Alyciana signing out. End transmission.